name's Derek from Tomcat Gash Training and I'm on site again today. Don't know what Kate's doing, booking me on site all this, all this time. But today we are um, on site doing a landlord's report. So I've got two trainees to help me along the way and I'm going to be showing them the correct procedures and hopefully showing you the correct procedures on doing a landlord's report and carrying this task out. Now, in this property, we've got a fire, a cooker and a boiler we need to look at. But before we get into the house and get cracking on the appliances, let's have a look at the legal obligations the landlord requires to do. And also what procedures the gas engineer needs to carry out when they are doing these landlord reports. So let's stop waffling and let's get on with it. Now, before we uh, get cracking on, like I've just said, let's have a look at the landlord's responsibilities first. So, number one, appliances provided by the landlord must be checked for safety at least, at least once a year. Now, a lot of um, tenancy agreements are six months now, but a landlord's report lasts 12 months. But when you've got change of tenants, the landlord should be at least having their integrity of the gas checked before the new tenant moves in because you don't want the old tenant leaving a dangerous situation. Number two, records must be kept for at least two years. So the landlord must keep his landlord's reports for two years plus the current one. So he must always have, or she must always have, at least three landlord's reports on record. Two of the old ones and the current one. Number three, records must be given to the tenant within 28 days of it being carried out. So you go in, do a landlord's report, there are already tenants there. You have to issue the landlord's report to the landlord so he then can give it, or she, can give it to the tenants within 28 days. Uh, the checks must be carried out by a gas safe engineer with the relevant qualifications. So if you've got a cooker in a house, in a tenanted house, and you haven't got cookers on your gas safe, then you can't do a landlord's report. So only guys with all the qualifications should be doing landlord's reports. Number five, any existing records must be given to the tenant before moving in. So if you do have a tenancy agreement, it's only six months, then the relevant gas safe certificate from six months before should be issued before they move in. And also it should be this gas safety check as well for the integrity of the gas should be given. And then finally, if occupancy is less than 28 days, a copy of the current gas safety check must be displayed. And this also applies to HMOs. Um, they should be displaying the gas safe certificate on the notice board with the relevant gas engineer's information removed so the tenants can't mither the engineer if anything goes wrong because they mither the landlord. So that's the landlord's legislation and the landlord's responsibilities for carrying out gas safety checks. Now let's have a look at the minimum checks the gas engineer needs to be doing. So number one, burner pressure and or gas rate or both. So if you can do burner pressure, you need to do it. And if you need to do the gas rate. Number two, operation of the safety devices. So testing thermoelectrics, uh, testing liquid vapors in cookers, all the safety devices. Number three, spillage test and flue flow testing. Any open fluid appliance, you'll need to do a flue flow test and a spillage test. Number four, again, any open fluid or fluidless appliances that require ventilation, you need to check the ventilation. Number five, appliances securely installed and fixed. So you're checking that cookers are stable and boilers don't fall off the wall. Number six, the fluid termination, whether it's an open fluid appliance or whether it's a room sealed appliance, you still need to check the fluid termination. Number seven, it's the flame pitcher or flue gas analyzing it. So if you can see the flame, you can do a flame picture, but if it's a zero governor or a flueless uh, space eater, you need to flue gas analyze it. Number eight, the condition of any case seals and the clearances around combustible material. 
Number nine. The condition of any cooker flexi hoses or whether a hob's got a hose fitted to it and that hose can be fitted to the um, hob and it's been installed correctly. Manufacturer's instructions are important whether a hob can be fitted with a flexible cooker hose or not. So you need to check the manufacturer's instructions. And then the last one, the actual condition of the appliance, whether the coals are in the right place for uh, insect life fuel effect fires, whether radiants are broken, um, whether sight glasses are broken on open fluid boilers. So the actual condition of the appliance, whether there's any rust on it, whether any products of combustion could get into that room due to the hole in that appliance or flue system. So that's the minimum checks the gas engineer needs to do. So what we're going to do now is let's get back on site and let's start this uh, landlord's report. So first thing we need to do is see the appliances we've got. So we've got a fire there. The cupboard on the left hand side there has got the gas meter in there. It's Andy, say hello Andy. <laughs> say hello Andy. Okay, so what we've got in the kitchen is we've got Ariston boiler and we've got a cooker which is not in the best position at all. So that's the appliances. Let's uh, start the testing. So before we do anything, we need to use our non-contact voltage indicator to make sure nothing's live. So we need to prove it first. So it's working and then we need to go and check the appliances. So let's check the boiler first. So there's nothing on the boiler. Let's check the pipe work. Let's check the pipe work. Nothing on the pipe work. Let's check the S pipe. There's nothing there. Let's go and check the cooker. Nothing on the cooker. Okay, let's prove it, see if it's still working. Okay, let's do our last checks on the fire. Oh, it's very unusual to get electrocuted from a fire because there's no power going to him, but yeah, never know. And finally, let's check the meter. So, Pipe work. That was picking the power up for that then. Pipe work, okay. Bracket, okay. Meter, okay. Anaconda, ECV. So let's do our visuals and see if we can find any faults. So, visuals first on the gas meter. So, the ECV falls to off, so that's good. We've got an on off label to tell the customer to turn the ECV off. The regulator's all sealed, so we can see that. We've got earth bonding within 600 or before the first branch, which we've got. We've got a bracket, which is a floor bracket, which is secure. So uh, we have the labels, the emergency label on the meter. Other than it being one of the horrible smart meters, other than that, Everything looks tickety-boo, so let's get a gas test on. And one thing Andy's just noticed is the tamper seal's on that side, but the tamper seal is missing on that side. So well done, Andy. Good lad. Spot on. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're noticing we're doing a tightness test on this landlord report. Now, according to the regulations, according to regulation 26.9, you don't have to do a tightness test on a landlord's report, but the landlord has a responsibility to have its gas pipe checked and its integrity checked at least once a year. So that's why we incorporate a tightness test into a landlord's report. But technically, these should be two completely separate entities and should be carried out separately. But for some reason, we let landlords off and um, we do it all at the same time. So yes, you don't have to do a tightness test on a landlord report, but every year the landlord has to have his gas integrity checked. I hope that's clear. So this is not normally a good sign with a fire, 
when the customer's got a, an igniter because it means probably the ignition's gone on the fire but we'll check that out so we just check the ignition and they press it in and you can see it fires up first time so that's a red herring <laughs> so on the landlord's reports it talks about co alarms so we've got a carbon monoxide alarm here hmm i think it's installed in the wrong place so this should be dated when it was installed and oh look it's not it says replaced 10 years after installation but the good thing is it does say it was manufactured on the 1st of the, well, 2020-01-11. So that must be the 11th of the 1st. <laughs> Makes no sense to me. <laughs> so uh, we need to test it. Oh. So that works. But this should be installed away from here on the wall to the manufacturer's instructions with these little hooks here not stuck on here <laughs> but it works it's tested and we'll we'll tell the uh, tenant that it needs to be installed correctly but in england this is not a regulation to have a co alarm for a gas fire only if you've got a solid fuel appliance in scotland it is law but in england and wales it isn't as we are filming this video so hopefully that will change one day now let's have a closer look at these carbon monoxide detectors uh, and see what you should be looking for when you're doing the landlord reports now the response time for these co detectors so before three minutes at a concentration of 300 parts per million so it should be reacting within three minutes if you're getting up to 300 parts per million. Between 10 and 40 minutes for a concentration of 100 parts per million. Between 60 minutes and 90 minutes for concentrations of 50 parts per million CO. And not before 120 minutes for concentrations of 30 parts per million. Now, the standards you should be looking at. So for the older CO detectors, they should conform to BS 7860-1996 for the older type. But, but the new type for after November 2006 should conform to BS EN 50291. So when we're doing a visual inspection of these um, CO alarms, that's what the British standards and European standards we should be looking for. Now... Let's have a quick look at how these alarms should be installed because the one we've just seen definitely isn't installed in the correct place. So let's have a quick look at that. Now let's look and see exactly where these CO alarms should not be installed. So should not, not should, should not. So you should be fitting them outside, pretty obvious. In or below a cupboard or in a drawer. I've seen them in a drawer a few times. No good there neither. In a damp or humid room. Now, technically a kitchen could be a damp or humid room. But you can fit them in kitchens as long as the manufacturer tells you you can. Above a sink or a cooker or a hob or any flueless appliance. Next to a door or a window. Because that will give drafts. So you don't want it near a door or a window. Or in an area where the temperature could be below 10 degrees C. Or above. 40 degrees C. So they're the major areas where you're not going to be installing them. But always follow the manufacturer's instructions for these CO alarms to tell you where you can install them. Some can be a metre away from appliance, some could be 3 metres, some could be 300 from the ceiling, some can be 150. So they're all different, not all different, but a lot of them are in different, uh, give different measurements. So refer to those manufacturer's instructions. We also have a smoke alarm fitted on the ceiling, just near the kitchen. But well, this is mandatory for landlords to install. So, the guys are just doing the tightness test now before we take the fire out. And then we will put it back in and do another tightness test because 
Andy's had it, wants to have a go now because Mo's done it. <laughs> <laughs> no so let's get this fire out and let's get the chimney tested. So let's have a quick look at this landlord homeowner gas safety record. Now it has to say landlord homeowner gas safety record. Okay. It's got to say that at the top. Anything else, you can't use it as a landlord report. And if it is another report, it will say not to be used as a landlord report. So that's the first thing. You've got to use the right report. It has to have a serial number. Okay? So you have to issue a serial number. Next thing here is this is where the details for the engineer would go. So this is my details. So my uh, company registration number, my name, my... Um, number on my card, the company, the address, the postcode, and my telephone number. Now the next one is the inspection address. So this will be the tenant's name, the tenant's the tenanted address with the postcode, the tenant's phone number, and they need to sign it. And then the last bit there is the landlord's details, which is the name of the landlord and the landlord's address, his postcode and his telephone number. So that's important that that information is filled in. Now, we have just done our visual inspection. So there are a few things we can fill in. So it says, do we have a satisfactory visual inspection? So I can tick yes. And it says, is the emergency control valve accessible? And again, yes, it was. I can tick yes. And it says, was the satisfactory uh, gas tightness test done? And there was, so again, I can tick yes. And is the equal potential bonding? And there was, within 600 and before the first branch. So again, I can tick yes. Now, if we didn't have any earth bonding in this property, but we do, but if we didn't, then I would have to leave one of these stickers, which basically explains to somebody who owned the house that they would need earth bonding installing and if they were a tenant then they would um, bring it to the attention of their landlord but i will write it on the landlord's report if it didn't have earth bonding but this house does but we found a fault didn't we we found a fault on the tamper seals missing on the gas beater so here we would put tamper seal missing at gas meter now next thing you can say is uh, rectification work carried out so that would be none because it's not to current standards and then any warning notice or any stickers fixed that would be na now the next bit it says Audible CO alarms, so approved CO alarm fitted. Well, there was, so that's a yes. It's our CO alarms in date. Well, technically it was, so we can put yes. And it said testing of CO alarms satisfactory. Well, we did, we tested it. So we can go yes. And is this smoke alarm fitted? And there was, because they are mandatory. And that's yes. So that's the first part of this landlord report we can fill in. So the first appliance we're going to be looking at will be the fire and we're going to be writing this information in here. So let's take a look at this fire. So as you can see, we've taken the fire out. The fire was secured by four screws on the marble back. So first thing is the gas pipe protected. <laughs> kind of, I think we'll be replacing that, is the actual fire sealed all the way around. It's on the sides, on the bottom, on the sides of there, so that's sealed, sealed on the inside. So what we need to do now is, we need to do a flu flow test. Yes, guys, you have to do this on a landlord's report. So let's get a flu flow test on, get that, see, make sure it passes, and then we can get it back in and do all the tests on the fire. So the guys are warming up the flu now. Now, technically, do we need to warm the flu up? 
We need some other float, guys. Yes. Yes, do we? A reg what the regulations say is you can try a match first to see if it's got a pull. Mm -hmm. If it hasn't got a pull, you can pre warm it for five minutes, then try a match again, and then try the bomb. But why not just cut the middleman out and heat the flue up first? Mm -hmm. So we've closed both doors, the window's closed, that door's closed, we've finished warming up, now we're going to try with a match first and then we're going to use a bomb to see whether this flue is okay. We need to go outside, we need to go upstairs, we need to go in the loft, we need to see whether anything is coming out. So, you're better off using blow lamp mode. Okay, so the guys can use a bomb now, and hopefully they'll light the bomb inside the chimney opening so it doesn't all come out. So, we can see it's going up. Rapidly. <laughs> so it's got a good pull, this chimney. So we need to go upstairs, we need to go outside to see if it's coming out the chimney. We also need to go up into the loft to make sure it's going straight up. So once we've done this bomb, we'll probably put another bomb up so we can go and check all the other places. It's always handy having three of us to do a flu flow <laughs> test and spillage. <laughs> so we're outside and you can now see the smoke's coming out of the chimney and it's coming out of the right place. It's not coming out the sides. Chimney looks in good nick. We've got no trees growing out of it. And we can see it's coming out of the right place. So gas pipe is taped up and protected. So uh, now we can get the fire back in and then get it tested. Because this fire is less than 7 kilowatts, it doesn't need any purpose provided ventilation for combustion. But always check your manufacturer's instructions to see if your appliance does require purpose provided ventilation for its combustion. Now technically we could just turn the gas on, spray the nuts with LDF and um, Test it that way, the gas, because that's the only nut we've undone. But for the guys' portfolios, they want to do another tightness test. So I'm quite happy for them to do another tightness test to definitely make sure we haven't done anything with the nut on the back or the pipe work when we were actually um, covering it. So that's what the guys are doing now. So results for the second tightness test. We have no leaks whatsoever. Happy days. So what we could do now is we can get purged and then we can do our standing and working pressures at the meter. So we're going to purge. So we have to purge five times the battery capacity, which will be 10 decimeters cubed or 0 0.01 meters cubed. So we're actually going to turn on the ring and light it. And then we're going to pass our figures. So while we're purging, there is a back door here, which is open. So we've got the door open, but we've actively lit it. So we're going to pass this minimum volume now of 0.01 meters cubed for a successful purge. So we're doing working pressure at the meter. We've got the hot tap running full. We've got the three biggest rings on the cooker. We're going to go through to the living room. We've got the fire on and we've got a working pressure at the meter, Andy, of 19.58. 19.58. So is that good? Perfect. Yeah. Okay.
So we need to gas rate the fire. So if we need to gas rate this fire, are you ready, Mo? Yeah. So one, two, go. So it'll come up test volume. We've got 0 0.5570. So we need the 0 0.557. So that's all the first. That's our first reading. We're now going to wait two minutes and then take our second reading. So now we're doing a spillage test, we'll drop it down a bit under so we can see the smoke coming out. It's getting hot. Yeah, really hot. Okay. See the smoke's going up chimney. Yeah, burning, burning, burning. Go right to the edge, put your hand to the edge. Drop it down. Okay, is that done? Yeah. And you can see it quickly took the smoke up there, yeah. so that's definitely passed. <laughs> and we can now, we've had the door shut and we've got the window shut. So it's pretty warm it's in here warm. now. <laughs> it's connected the analyzer now. Most turning the gas on, and now he's going to spray the test nipple with LDF to make sure we've no leaks. That's good. Happy? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, happy. So we're now doing inlet pressure, and this requires 20 millibars inlet pressure, and we've got 20.1 as you can see. Now, technically, because this is a landlord report and we've gas rated, we don't really need this figure. But the guys want to do it for the portfolio. So that's how you check your inlet pressure. Okay, it's inlet pressure because it's before anything on the gas valve. <laughs> and again, always remember to spray your nipples. Who <laughs> <laughs> hey, misses? So last test on this fire is to check the safety device. So I've got it on pilot, so I'm going to blow it out. Now we're going to start the stopwatch and see how long it takes for the gas valve to click. It has to be done in less than 60 seconds. There you go, about 27 seconds. So that's flame supervision device, thermoelectric device is working. Now let's get this filled in for the fire. The first one is location. So the location was in the living room. Now the second is make a model and it was a half product. Now the next thing is type, so that will be fire. Now the next one says flu type, so it was open flued. The next one, it says operating pressure in millibars or heat input in kilowatts. And it was 6.39 kilowatts, so 6.39 kilowatts. Don't give you a lot of space to write in. Safety device is correct and operating. Well, we tested them, so that's a definite yes. It says spillage test, and that was a definite pass. Next one is smoke pellet test. So your smoke bomb, five meters cubed over 30 seconds. Did that pass? Yes, because we checked everywhere. Outside, the loft, the bedrooms. Initial combustion analyst readings. Well, that's a NA because we don't need to analyze it. And final combustion analyst readings will be NA. It said satisfactory termination, and that's a big yes. Next one, flu visual condition passed. Well, yes, because we tested it. Adequate ventilation, well it was under um, 7 kilowatts, but we still checked if it needs ventilation, it doesn't, but yep, yeah, it's adequate, yes. Is it landlord's appliance? It certainly was. Was it inspected? Well, you saw we did. Is the appliance serviced? We definitely stripped and cleaned it. Not that you saw in the video, but we did. And appliance was safe to use after all the tests. It was a definite yes. 
So that's how we fill this landlord's report in for the fire. Now let's have a look at the cooker. And that is the end of part one on how to carry out a landlord's report. Now if you've enjoyed this video why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to our channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because we release videos mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and tune in on Wednesday for part two of this video on how to carry out a landlord report. Cheers, guys.